Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gotham City. This is a podcast where I talk to people who primarily are in the world of chess, at times are not. In this episode, I am speaking with Indian superstar Grandmaster Arjun Eregaisi. He has taken the chess world by storm over the last few years. He is surging up into the 2700 club, recently was ranked the second best chess player in India, which is a tremendous accomplishment. And he was only second to Vishwanathan Anand, one of the greatest chess players of the last several decades, if not of all time. I hope you enjoy this wide-ranging conversation regarding Arjun's career. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. I want to start with... So I know you in a, in a unique way. Like, I know about a lot of the young players from India, uh, but I know you in a slightly different way because there was a summer that I played your coach, your former coach, I believe, Victor Michalewski. I played him two times in five days. So we, we just played in a tournament and then we played in a round robin right after that. And I remember him posting on Facebook a couple of months later that he had a student named Arjun Eregaisi who got all his norms in like eight months so or six months or something like that. Can you take me back through that time? Can you tell a little bit to the audience like that journey of being 2300, working with Victor and getting your three norms, I mean, six norms for IM and GM kind of in six months? Yeah, so it was back in 2018. So I crossed 2300 in 2016, February, if I remember correctly. And I was stagnant around that point for a very long time, for two years around. And that was the time when I was approaching my 10th grade. So I wasn't sure if I should spend more time on chess or studies. And it was a very difficult phase for me. But uh, I started working with Victor Sir in 2017. And I always could see that it was helping me. And I, I could feel that I was improving, but results were just not showing up. And I kept trying, trying. and. My father wanted me to quit chess and get back to studies and all this was happening. But finally, 2018, January is when it started and I made my first IM norm. I, I was just at 2300 FM then. But once it started, I, I started getting confidence. So it was like, I made my first IM norm in January. In February, I made my second norm in April. No, in March, I made my third norm and I became an IM also. I got my rating to 24.58, already quite close to the 2500 mark. And I took a break in April, or I played but didn't do so well. But again, I just continued playing. I went abroad, I went to Armenia, Serbia, and I finally made all my norms. So I made six norms and gained around 150 yellow in eight months. And you got your last GM norm also 2018. When was that? Which month was that? August. August. In Abu Dhabi Masters. Okay. In, in Abu Dhabi Masters. Okay. I, that was one thing I wanted to ask as well. And I, I'll just ask now. Um, of these six tournaments where you made your norms, how many were in India? Uh, two of them were in India. The, two of them. The very first IM norm and the very first GM norm. Were those open tournaments or just like round robins? Yeah, they were open tournaments. We don't have any round robins here in India. But because you would probably have like 50 sections. <laughs> it would be so many players. <laughs> um, okay, so okay, they were open tournaments, understand. And then, yeah, for four of them, you needed to travel to Europe and to yeah. Abu Dhabi, right? Yeah. Um, that's a very important detail for people who don't understand norm chasing in chess like i know it's it, it might it might be a personal question but like i've shared how much it costs to play a chess tournament is it similar if you're going to travel with your family let's say to europe isn't it thousands of dollars i mean it's a very expensive trip like you you need to do well otherwise it's a waste of money right yeah it is quite a lot definitely and especially around that time i i wasn't even like uh, my results were not even showing, so I'm very thankful to my parents that despite all that, they continued me. Yes. And that's one of the reasons I imagine your father was like, okay, let's end this chess stuff, let's study more, let's, you know, let's have a kind of normal career. He, he was also a bit sad that I was losing all my childhood, I hardly went to school and, and I wasn't even getting anything in return in chess, so... 
That's interesting. You were you weren't going to school because you were playing so many tournaments or because you were studying? No, that was mostly because I was fully focused on chess. Okay. And I just used to give my examinations in the end and nothing else. So I did not have any school friends or anything. Ah, wow. Wait, so you you were enrolled in school, but you would just do do the tests, like the required testing? Got it. Yeah. And my school was very supportive. They just wanted me to give the examinations, and that was enough. Wow. That would not work here. So just so you understand, here uh, we have, uh, like, you have to show up to class, like, attendance. I, that, I'm sure that's a thing there, too. I guess you just, you, you were yeah, allowed because you had, like... I am allowed, yes. Okay, wow. A in India do the same. Oh, okay. So a lot of the other guys also, they, like, they, they're in school, but they're allowed to travel kind of as much yeah. as they need? Okay. Yeah, they have, like, a long leave. Okay, understood. See, in, in, in the U.S., uh, our school year is uh, early September until end of June. Um, and you're only allowed to miss 20 days. Like, beyond cool. 20 days, you, you get in trouble or you need some extra special permission. But as you know, if you're going to play tournaments between September and June, you're going to miss yeah. more than 20 yeah. days. <laughs> okay, that's not that well then. Yeah, wow. Okay, so you, you were traveling in Europe. And this is common, uh, right? This, like... For, for people listening, it's very normal to go to Europe, uh, to, go to, to go to Abu Dhabi. Um, specifically Abu Dhabi, by the way, there was this recent tournament. Uh, did you play the most recent Abu Dhabi Masters? Yes, I won that. Okay. Yeah, well, shocking. I should... <laughs> that, was like a, that, was, that was like a setup question. Um, I, so, Arjun, I noticed that more than half of the field was from India. Why is that? Like, my geography is very bad. Is it because it's very close to fly? It's just simple? Or why is that? Probably, I think a lot of Indians want to play abroad. And UAE is like not just Abu Dhabi, but Dubai or Sharjah. It's, it's all very close and very convenient to travel. So I believe that's one of the main reasons why there are a lot of Indians. Gotcha. I noticed. I think it was half plus one. So you guys were like 50% of the players. And I noticed every round you have to like play each other almost because there's no <laughs> there's no alternative um amazing well uh congratulations i one of the th well it's actually a, a great point i made a big outline for today's conversation uh and i did not put the, the recent tournaments that you won so if i keep asking questions about tournaments just tell me every tournament that you won. it will look you know yeah. it will look more uh, epic that way um so take me before 2300 so you were when did you learn chess? What was your kind of early inspiration? Where, and also kind of where are you from in India? Is there a big chess culture there? Because India, I feel like different parts of India are so big they could be their own countries, right? So where are you from in India? Kind of how did you come to chess? Where did you first play it? And so on. Yeah, so I live in a city called Varangal. Uh, it's close to a, a major city called Hyderabad. And there's not so much chess culture. And I'm the first grandmaster from this state. Now we have like five or six. And okay, when I started playing chess, it was back in 2011. Actually, the reason I got into chess was because we used to live in a city called Tirupati. And there, uh, I used to be pretty good at maths. And my teacher suggested my parents to get me into chess. So we couldn't do that because uh, it wasn't so easy in that city. But after we moved to Varangal, that's where I started playing chess, just as a hobby in 2011. And I was just attracted by the sport. I, I just enjoyed playing it. I, do, I kept doing it nonstop. Not just chess, I used to go for skating, swimming, et cetera. But chess is something that attracted me the most. I enjoyed it tremendously. That's how it all began. And uh, do you still do any of the other things, swimming and so on? Uh -huh. No, not much. I do play some table tennis, but that is it. I feel like chess and table tennis is a very normal combination. Would you, would you agree? At these big tournaments, do you ever play the Super Grandmasters? Like, well, the, well now you are a Super Grandmaster, but like, have you played like MVL in ping pong? I hear he plays a lot of ping pong. No, I haven't. I mostly play with, with the circle that I am in, like most, most of the Indians. And I'm, I'm pathetic at it, but I enjoy it a lot. 
Well, I play table tennis too. <laughs> not uh, not well, but uh, I enjoy it a lot. It's a very fun social activity also. Um, I feel like a lot of chess players uh, also play table tennis. But um, yeah, I this is a familiar, kind of a familiar story. And were you one of the kids growing up that uh, you played a lot online, probably, when you were super young, Blitz, Bullet, like all the time? Yes, I played a lot online in, I think, around 2015 or something, I started playing on chess.com. And Blitz Bullet, it just fascinated me so much, especially the non-increment time control. It was just so much fun to flag people when they were on or something. I really enjoyed that, and I spent a lot of time work doing that. What do you think was the reason that you got to 2300 at the age of 10, 11? You could name one reason. I came to 2300 at 12, actually. And I believe it was my instincts that helped me a lot. I don't think I was particularly good at calculation at that point. But I think I had good instincts. I see. You think that could have been maybe helped or developed by speed chess? Or maybe not Quite so much? Possibly. Quite possibly the case. That's also one of the reasons I prefer and enjoy the rapid list more than classical. Understood. Um, when the world shut down in 2020, in March, February, March, uh, what rating were you back then? I was at 2559. 2559, okay. And you were probably going like up, right? That was probably, you were at your peak? Like you had not fallen from no, something. Actually, it was up and down. My peak was 2575. Okay. And I had just written for my Europe trip. Uh, I played in, uh, I played in Spain, Italy, and then I went in, and played in Russia, Moscow, the Aeroflot Open. That was my last tournament before I came to India. Uh-huh. Wow, I was going to ask a question about uh, about pandemic, but now now I'm just fascinated. Arjun, you, these tournaments, like traveling this much, I mean, it's tens of thousands of dollars. Were you winning tournaments yet? Like, were you winning prizes in some of these tournaments that you were playing? Because at 2,500, you cannot win a big open, right? So were you winning class prizes, like the under 2,600 or the 2,500? I mean, like, you 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 were like a startup company, no? <laughs> like, I mean, basically, you know, you, you're traveling and, and pl making all these... Uh, expenses but it, it like the journey to being a super gm is is a lot of time and money no yeah indeed uh, it was a lot of expenses i was winning some players but it was nowhere close to how much we were spending wow and, but fortunately for me uh, financially it was never really a problem my parents took care of everything so that wasn't an issue but just my growth uh, there were stages you know so around 2018, I was stuck at 2300. And then un like from in 2018, I became a grandmaster and I was dated about 2530 or something. And I was stuck there until 2020 and even after that until 2021. But so when the, these phases, I feel like I'm not improving. And that's the stage which, which pisses me off sometimes. Right. But, Right, right, right. And again, I'm not. I'm, the goal is not to. Uh, the goal is not to ask uh, personal questions about uh, about income as much as it is just to give people an understanding of like these tournaments and the travel. You just named Spain, Italy, Russia, like uh, for Aeroflot Open. I mean, this is this is plane tickets for you. Would you travel with just your dad, or both your parents would come with you? Oh no, my my dad is actually very busy. He's a doctor. Oh. He hasn't traveled with me to a single tournament until now. But oh, wow. my, my mother kept traveling with me a lot until a point. But after the point, I started traveling with my friends. And... Yeah, that's a very fun period, right? When you travel alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's more fun. I know. Uh, I got started on that in the US when I was maybe 11. I probably got started way too early. <laughs> um, my parents sort of, for me, chess was just this thing that I did. And uh, they did not know anything about it, so they just kind of let me. And I would take like the subway uh, train in New York alone. I think I started flying to tournaments alone when I was like thirteen or fourteen, so maybe like fourteen, fifteen. Uh, so yeah, I know it, every chess player goes through this kind of evolution. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, back to you know pandemic twenty five fifty. So world shuts down. Did you do you remember what your plans were? Because I remember 
in New York, the, the whole, everything shut down like two weeks into March. So do you remember what your plans had been? Like what you were planning to play before everything shut down? Yes, I do remember. So I was planning to play in Vietnam. There was a tournament called HD Bank. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. HD Bank Open, yeah. Also, I was planning to play in Dubai, Sharjah, all these tickets, all these tournaments. And I think I also booked my airplane tickets. And I was quite excited because uh, so before this trip in the Europe trip in uh, Spain, Italy, etc., I I wanted to play a lot, but I couldn't because I had to give my tent examination. Tent I took quite seriously, so I spent a lot of time. And after that, I wanted to play a lot, but I had a surgery. Uh, I had a knee injury, so I had to go through a surgery and three months of bed rest. And after that, I wanted to play a lot. I did, and I just wanted to continue to play. But the pandemic happened, so I was very sad at that point that I couldn't play any longer. Oh my God! What'd you do to your knee? What did a chess player do to his knee? Well, this is a very funny story. I I fell down in a flight. In in a flight? Yeah. Like on a plane? Yeah, on a plane before they took off. So. Oh, oh, because were you walking up the stairs to the plane or? Oh, no, no. I just got into the seat. I, I wanted to put my bag up. So I just got up and something happened to me. I fell down. And later the doctor told me that my bones are naturally a bit uh, loose or something like that. So I should be very careful in general. It can happen just like that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you, you were obviously on a plane to a chess tournament. Yes, I was going to Switzerland, Zurich, Beer. Ah, you played like the Beal, not the Masters, but there's like a, a second section, right? Like I think the Open? Yeah, open tournament. The Open tournament, wow. So did you play the whole tournament with like a broken knee or something? Yes, so my mother was like, let's just go back to India and see. But I really <laughs> wanted to play. and But she, she was desperate to go back because she was so tense. She didn't know what was happening there. So she was even looking for flight tickets, but luckily we found kneecap and somehow it really helped. And in fact, I even won the Blitz tournament. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, that's a uh, oh, that is that. But how how is your knee now? How is the how are you feeling now physically? It's not completely fine. It doesn't really change anything. Yeah, yeah, it's uh well, Arjun. Not you don't need my chest advice, but I will say if you have free time, you should you know you should buff up a little bit. You never know when there's going to be a chess boxing. You well, you're doing like a death match, right, against Gukesh. When is that? It's on fifth November. I don't mind if it's a chess boxing match. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna you guys are not gonna punch each other, but uh, you never know um, yeah. when it could when it could come in handy. No, but I hear I hear that to be a really good chess player, you need to be in really really good shape, right? We hear this a lot, uh, and well, I'm curious. Right now, are you just taking advantage of being a young guy because you're healthy overall? You're you're not doing like an hour of physical fitness every day. You're not like running, lifting weights. Is that kind of the next step? Um, I do like forty five minutes a day, but it's not intense, not at all. It's just the very very basic and the bare minimum that I can do. Got so, you. I'm not taking it that seriously, but yeah, at some point, I think I'll have to be more serious about it. You're taking advantage of being a young guy. You know, people in their 30s tell me, oh, you're, you know, you're only 26. You don't know what it feels like. And I'm telling you, you're 19. You don't know what it feels like, right? So it keeps going, you know, down and down. I had a, I, yeah, I had a, I think everybody in their life, probably in their first 20 years has some sort of injury. Mine was like my lower back, which obviously is really tough because you can't, you know, sitting constantly for chess. Now it's okay, but yeah, it has it, it has flare ups. It has some problems. Uh, but okay, but yeah, let's go to let's go to kind of co uh, pre COVID. You know, you have the surgery. You wanna you wanna play more, but now you can't. So now what? Right? It's March, April. It's like panic. You don't know. Can you leave your house? Are you gonna die? <laughs> you know, it's like a crazy time in the world. Uh, so what did you do? Did you just play online? Did you? start training like what was your first couple of months like because it feels like it was 10 years ago but at the same time it feels like it was yesterday so can you take me through that time what did you do for your chess because you couldn't go out and play yeah so at first i was very motivated to work hard and get stronger in the 
during the pandemic so that I can play well once I, I get to play tournaments. Mm -hmm. And I started playing all of these online tournaments. There were some PNWCC events and title juices, everything, everything that was possible. And also I started to train a lot more than I used to. And I was quite motivated. But after the point, like after six months into the pandemic, uh, like around October, November, I started losing motivation. But all of the work that I'm doing is not really helping me because there were no tournaments and I just lost motivation. And in fact, I remember at some point I was spending more time on Among Us than on chess. Do you know <laughs> this game Among Us? Yes, Among Us. <laughs> yeah. I used to play it a lot with my friends and we used to play for like we used to start at 10 p.m. or something and play until 4 a.m. in the morning sometimes. It was crazy. Wow. When you say friends, who who is the like? Are all the young guys in India friends? You, Prague, Nihal, Gukesh, etc. It's like is that the circle? Prague is the only one whom I don't know so well, but that circle included uh, amongst the names that you mentioned. It just included Nihal, and there were some others like Siddhan, Balu. I, I I'm not sure if you are aware of them. Uh, what were their names? Or Siddhant, Balachandra Prasad. And, and they're, they're also like young GMs? Yeah, they're also young. They're international masters. Ah, well, they got to, you know, they got to become GM and then, and then we'll hear about them in six months probably because they will be winning. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be completely honest, Arjun. If I haven't, like, I feel like the chances of there being a titled player from India who I haven't heard of at this point is so high. And I yeah. experienced this, for example, when I was scrolling through this tournament that you won. I'm like, who are these 2400s? I've never heard of them in my life. It's so scary. <laughs> um, so, but wow, Among Us uh, is, uh, yeah, I remember that, man. I remember. And all the streamers were playing it, and it was, uh, it was an interesting time. Yeah. What was the first uh, tournament you played when the world opened? When was that? Uh, I played in March of 2021 in Bangladesh. It was just one tournament. How did it go? Oh, I gained like nine yellow and I was quite happy with that. Okay. And also some of the people tested positive there. I was fortunate enough not to. So. <laughs> and you played in a mask. Oh, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I remember those days. Very scary if you hear a positive test. Now it's like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, now uh, And then what? So you played this tournament in Bangladesh. When did you get to travel again? Yeah, after that. Uh, there were some tournaments planned in Serbia, I think June 23 or something. Uh, but okay, the tournament that really helped me was we had a tournament called Indian Chess Tour on Chess 24, only for Indians. It was a knockout tournament. And firstly, it was not easy to get to it. So firstly, I had to get a village. We, we had something called village chess tour, the qualifiers. I won one of the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. I made it to the knockouts. And there, the top eight make it to the Indian chess tour. So I finished fourth or something. And finally, I made it to the village chess, uh, Indian chess tour. And I was facing Nihal there. I was quite, that gave me a lot of motivation again. And that is the period when I started working a lot on my openings. Before that, I never really took my openings so seriously. They were slightly predictable and kind of bad. But that's when I started taking the opening stage of the game for CDFC. I started working a lot and I beat Nihal in the match and I won the tournament, which gave me an entry to a Champions Chess Tour event. So I played in Champions Chess Tour and I qualified for the knockouts in 2021 June. And I played a match against Levon. It was pretty close. So it ended on 30th June. Mm -hmm. And the, the same night, just after two hours, I traveled to Serbia. Wow. I remember that. Yeah, you made it to the quarterfinal, right? Or something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it to the quarterfinal. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then you, went to, you went to Serbia. And how did the tournament in Serbia go? Oh, that also went to it. I mean, I didn't win it as such, but I just gained 11, 11 points. And I played a couple of tournaments in Serbia, 11 each. Then I went to Portugal. I gained like five, and I kept gaining throughout the trip and I, I spent two months in Europe 
And when I returned, I was at 2633. And now you are a hundred points higher than that too. Yeah. So it's this different. growth, like 2550, 2560 to 2630, do you think that's because of the opening preparation, just understanding openings and how to study them? Or was there something else? I believe opening was a crucial thing, but I don't think it's the only thing that changed because all the work that I had done earlier, like playing online and all this, I think it really had also one of the things I believe in was before the pandemic itself, I was a bit underrated, but it was just not showing up. And after the pandemic, it all just showed up and it's a combination of a few things that helped me. Was it the same that helped you get to 2630 that now helped you get to 2730? Or do you need something more than that in there? Like something with your nervous system, something with your, I don't know, uh, what, what, what is it that helps you get from the, ne the next 100 points? I think the process of just playing a lot, like I played a lot of tournaments in 2021, also early 2022. And I, after the, each tournament, I used to come back home unless they make a list, list of what I'm doing wrong and etc. So just this process, I think that helped me a lot. Of course, I used to do other opening training as well. And, but I think most of the credit goes to this process when I just used to play unless, play unless, rectify mistakes. Have you ever, in all this growth, at any point, kind of sat there and went, wait a minute, I think I can be the champion of the world? Oh, yeah. That I thought about it back in 2017 or 18, in fact. Wow. Okay. I wasn't like, I can be. And, and now is the time I started to think about it quite seriously. And, and I believe if I, if I can play very well, Maybe even at the moment, I can. I have the strength to win a rapid world tournament or world blitz tournament. And you, by the way, where is that? Is there a location? Oh, uh, I heard Kazakhstan, but I'm not sure. Oh my god, I heard Uzbekistan and maybe Abu Dhabi. <laughs> okay. Abu Dhabi was planning earlier, I think, but, but I'm not sure. But you're gonna play? Yeah, I'll play for sure. Okay, but what about Visa? It should be manageable, I believe. Okay. Yeah, because I noticed in the last year, any time uh, like a strong Indian player needed a visa, like you guys got taken care of. <laughs> it's sort yeah. of what it, what it feels like. Only yeah. American people would be an issue, though. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we are very... Did Vidit get his visa for the fall? He got the appointment, so I believe he must have gotten the visa. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, for those unaware, there's a chess tournament starting November 1st in St. Louis called the Fall Classic, and Vidit was going to play. Uh, and I believe his visa appointment was scheduled for May 2023, so he would have missed the tournament by about six months. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I, I know, it, it's very tough. It's like the connection between certain countries is extremely difficult, uh, and I, it's just unfortunate. So, But if you can go to... Kazakhstan or Abu Dhabi. Well, you probably already have a visa for Abu Dhabi, or you might not even need a visa. You, I'm sure you can. You, you're you're going to no, be I fine. It's just e visa, and it shouldn't be too much. Okay. Of a club. Well, I'm going to win the the World Rapid or Blitz Championship. Uh, last year, you came either you came very close. I believe you yeah, were on board one a few times. I came very close in Blitz. It was my first World Rapid Blitz event, actually. Mm -hmm. And in Rapid, I did Patter Tech, but in Blitz, I was, at some point, I had Seoul third or Seoul second, but I, out of the last four games, I scored mm -hmm. only half point. What happened? Uh, I lost to MVL. I cleanly got outplayed. And in the next game, I was, I was winning with Sirozja, but I think I kind of went on a tilt and I lost that game. I lost the next game and I was losing the next game as well. That's one of the things I wanted to ask. It, it, I feel like, for example, for myself, when I was chasing a title, I have a, obviously a completely different journey. I also was uh, doing a, a work outside of chess. Like I was always, it was very difficult to turn it into an actual career in terms of making money. But for myself, I always stopped at a certain point mentally. Said, okay, I'm going to get the IM title. I'll be happy. Maybe I should have said I'm going to get the GM title, but I just never really thought that I would be uh, even I am because <clears throat> think about this. 
you're 19, right? And 27, 30. When I was 19 years old, I was 2200. So I feel like <laughs> I, I could not have possibly thought of myself as a super grandmaster uh, or potentially even a grandmaster. But uh, I, I, I got the IM title. So on this journey, right, you're gaining rating, you're getting better. Now suddenly, do you ever have this moment like, wait, my opponents are now the people that I used to watch their games. I used to watch their games. I used to watch them play. Now here I am, like I'm playing them. So what... What did you have to do mentally? Or did you have to do nothing mentally? Did it just come naturally to you? Like, this is just chess. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, usually it's, it's been just coming naturally. It didn't really matter so much. But when I started playing against Magnus, uh, I realized I had to do something mentally because my quality was just dropping right from the start whenever I played him. And so I consulted a mental coach. And I, not many people in the chess world, at least in India, have done this, I, I believe. And, and I think it's, it is it is helping me a bit. At least the, ma the last match that I played against Magnus, or the first game I, I played very well, and I was very proud of that. Yeah, and of course, you, you actually won in the... In the, the prelims. Yeah, yeah in, in the prelims. I, I know I... I'm willing to bet you don't consider games like that like this huge accomplishment, but the media does, right? The media, you're just like, oh, it was a rapid game. You know, he blundered somewhere, whatever. You know, it's about winning the match, the best of yeah. four, right? Yeah. yeah. Had I won the first game in the match, I would have been really happy. Yeah. And I was very close to doing that. It was a bit unfortunate, but I believe my nerves got to me and... I guess I'll get better at that with experience. Understood. And I know these questions can be a bit like strange. I know in the chess world, that you you it's really tough to ask competitors like uh, about like nerves and uh, being uh, whatever, just sort of well, whatever. I don't know if the right word is intimidated, but it, it chess is a very like mental and individual game. You don't want to kind of spoil any strategy. But so you're saying. With Magnus, it's maybe a little bit different, but okay, you've already seemingly to conquer that. But everybody else, you're like, I'm going to just take care of them, no problem. <laughs> uh, not at the very start, but with time, I just got used to it. So the match against Levon, which I had, I think that really helped me a lot. After that, I, I haven't really, like, my quality hasn't really dropped just because I'm playing someone very strong after that match. I think that match is what, should take the credit for that, I believe. And I'm sure it feels nice to see like other top guys saying, "Oh yeah, he's he's the one. Like he's you should watch him, right?" And that's that, that's pretty cool. Uh, would it be what if what if they started talking trash? What if they were like, "Ah, he's overrated." Would it motivate you even more? <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, I'm overrated." <laughs> uh, well, perhaps it would motivate me. Yeah. I don't know, we just don't have many trash talkers in, in the world of chess. But actually on that note, I was told you before uh, we recorded, I was going to ask you, you are, obviously we have this whole big chess drama, speaking of some trash talkers. Uh, you've played Hans. You played Hans a couple times online, and I think you played him over the board? No? In a... I played him a couple of times over the board as well. In classical or...? Yeah, in classical twice, once in blitz. Okay. And I know Sagar Shah asked you, I think, about this. Like, I've seen it, but some of my viewers or listeners might not have. So can you just tell me a little bit what it's like playing Hans, just sort of what you've seen about Hans as, as he's gotten, you know, on this, also on his own rise to the top and your experience playing him, his playing style, whatever. Yeah, so uh, I believed at that point, like when he was uh, in the pandemic, when he was around 2450, I thought he was clearly underrated. He should be a lot higher than his rating. And I played him in Portugal, uh, an open tournament in 2021 August. He played a very nice game and outplayed me completely. Okay, it, it did have some errors in the game, but he played well. I was quite in, impressed. And again, I, I got my revenge in the World Blitz event. Uh, in 2021 and we I lost to him in, in the Sigeman Open in Sweden and all, all of these games seemed quite normal I didn't find anything suspicious or such and I believe he's a very strong 
or like i don't know about the, all the allegations and stuff but even if not for that i believe he is a very strong practical player anyway i think he at least 26 50 he surely does have yeah 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 that's what i uh Actually, a lot of people have said the same thing, and uh, I I didn't realize you guys played so many games against each other. And you played a uh, it was a prelim recently. You you didn't play a match. Uh, I remember, yeah, you recently played prelim, and he played like this queen a five, and you just took on d five and got yeah, a completely yeah. winning position. That was so yeah. I was like, what? I had one match with him actually in the junior pitches championship. Oh wow! It was also quite close, but in the end, I clinched it. Got you, got you. Understood. Well, we can go down the list of all the big names that you played. One of the games that you played recently was a very fun one, uh, at least to me. And I told you before we even recorded, I was a little bit sad this video didn't do so well. But you got a chance to play uh, Vichy, right? So what was that like? Is that just another day at the office? Or is it like, oh my God, I'm, you know... What, what, did Vichy play a role in your journey as a as a as a chess kind of player, or I just tell me about that game? Tell me about that matchup and uh, the emotions, nerves going into it. Yeah, so I think uh, almost for any chess player in India who starts out, uh, they take Vichy as their role model mm-hmm. in chess, and it was the same for me, and it it felt surreal to actually play against him in a classical game but I w- at the same time I, w- I was quite excited and I was quite motivated to win that game and I prepared something uh, like that is not so popular and uh, I was quite motivated quite happy with my play and the game did go well until a point and it was very complicated and at some point he played a more night a four, and that's so like I don't think I would have been able to find it in in a million years. That that move impressed me so much. And after the game, uh, so usually whenever I lose, I feel like perhaps at this point I went wrong. I I just understand it. But after this game, I did not even understand where exactly I went wrong. So that is something like that game, the way he played it, uh, I just was so impressed. And I, usually when I lose, I'm very sad and upset about it. But that game, I wasn't even so sad because it was more like he played so well that I didn't get a chance. So I was just impressed and I I want to learn from him and get even better. And the, I, okay, I, I went, I, I pulled, I pulled it up here on my, on my monitor because I remember thinking, yeah, he played knight a4 at some point. And everything is so different when you're in recap mode. Also, when you're trying to break games down like to a, to an audience, it's it's completely different when you play the game and you're sitting there for, for hours. Um, my question about that game specifically was, did you, were you following the game from the Olympiad? I forgot who played it. I think Shevchenko was one of the guys. Uh, I think Surya had a game in this opening. If okay. And I just was aware that there's a game in this opening in the Olympiad, but I did not really know too many games. How does that cuz you did you did play like a huge sideline in in a very popular opening. Did you decide to do that like just before the game? You said, "Okay, like I I have maybe a couple of weapons waiting in a certain opening, so I'm going to use this one now." Uh, yeah, so I was with my coach, come mentor, Srinat, and he suggested this. And at first, at first, I was like, no way I'm playing this against Vishy. He asked me to make a few moves for a white on my own. And I realized it's not so simple. So I thought it's, it's I, I knew it would be a surprise for sure. So I thought it's worth it there. Wow. Okay, so to to summarize, <laughs> for people to understand, you're playing black against Vichy. So you're, you're in the game, you were black, but your like, trainer, well, Srinath, I know Srinath, maybe not everybody knows Srinath, but like Srinath basically says, hey, play this idea with, with the color you're going to play. And you say, no way. <laughs> and then he tells you to play as Vichy. He says, well, play a few moves on the opposite side just to see how difficult it is practically. And then you went, ooh, okay, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I will. Um, 
and then yeah it was a it was a very complicated game and then you went for knight takes h2 and obviously from from there it was uh yeah vichy took over but um what was the time situation in that game like is vichy a fast player like were you playing kind of the way you normally play uh were you who was in time trouble yeah he's quite a fast player in general and in the opening uh, i kind of caught him so he spent a little bit of time and i did get some uh, advantage on the clock but then he started playing fast and i took some time so we had roughly around the same time or it was less by minus two minutes and i think when i took knight h2 we had around the same time but after that uh, i think he knew he was winning so he just took his time and slowly converted it nicely when you when you took on h2 did you think you were like you when you sacrificed the knight in that game uh, for kind of like an attack? Did, were you doing it out of desperation or were you doing it out of uh, like I, you actually thought you were you were just gonna win the game after knight takes h two and then you missed the small resource? Oh no, I thought it's just a uh, like I thought after the sacrifice I would get three points which I was getting and in terms of material it's even mm -hmm. and so there's I thought there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, even while analyzing, uh, he he felt that he should be close to winning this, but I I thought it should be a complicated position where I, even I could be better, but uh, he was completely right. So yeah, I mean that's kind of normal in in chess, right? You see the same thing, you just evaluate it differently, and uh, sometimes one side is right, sometimes both sides are right, um, but sometimes uh, yeah, sometimes uh, sometimes. Um... You kind of go for something and it and it and it doesn't quite work. Yeah, but uh, well, the interesting thing about like the the variation that you played in that game against Vichy was uh, was very rare, very unique. So it's kind of like a one time thing, right? It's not it cannot become a a main part of your repertoire because then you simply become too predictable. Um, but when you need it, when you need like a weapon to win with black. Uh, you will be fed the weapon, and then you will you will go and use it. That's sort of chess now, right? It's a lot of this, a lot of being ahead of others with opening ideas, right? I mean, how how much of your training at at your current level is is prep and openings versus other things? I mean, can you even train other things at this point, or is it just basically getting to a comfortable position in the opening? Yeah, I think there's a lot of improvement uh, outside of the opening phase as well. So uh, I do a lot of calculation work and stuff, but also I focus a lot on openings, try to find new different ideas in different positions and everything. What, uh, what, what is your overall repertoire? Are you like relatively flexible uh, or are you, I mean... Yeah. This is all kind of information. I'm not asking anything that's like super, you know, pro but are you kind of, it's kind of like e5, c5 with black and you have to play, uh, you know, you don't play knight f6, g6, you play knight f6, e6, d5, like this kind of a thing, right? You have a very professional repertoire, I would imagine. And do you have any? Also, I believe I w I'm very flexible. Like I, I can play King Cindy and I can play Grunfeld. I can play normal semi slab or something, Nimzo, whatever. Okay. And also Sicilian, Caravan, French, E4, E5. I'm, I'm just very flexible. I mostly decided according to my opponent. Uh-huh. And obviously, the shorter the time control, the more you can... Yeah, the yeah. more like... Yeah, the, the, the more you can mess around and get an imbalanced position uh, because you have... Uh, wow. So I always... I, I like to say this sentence to the audience, like uh, e even me, right? Like I know every opening in chess. I could play probably five, ten moves in every... Does that mean that beyond that I can play it? No, probably not. But when you say you can play French, you, you know, you can play Grunfeld, Kings Indian, like, you, you actually have very good and decent theoretical knowledge in most of the main lines, right? Uh, not in all, for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing I like about myself is that uh, despite not knowing so much theory in some lines, for instance, yet I'm confident that I can... F find the most OTB if I'm surprised. So I think that's that's a good thing. Do you have a do you have a memory of being caught in some crazy prep over the board and you have to figure it out? No, 
crazy prep as such, but recently in Dubai, I was playing against Fredkia Alexander from mm. Russia. And uh, so it was like E4, C5, and F3, and C6. And I thought that he was mostly playing Knight C3 or D4. And, but against me, he played Bishop B5. My knowledge there is very limited. And okay, I knew very few moves. Like I knew we, I had to play E6, Knight G7, Knight G6. And that was pretty much it. That was my knowledge. And I played that. I got worse. He was making him his moves very quickly and all. And also I could just feel that I got worse. But I, I was still very confident that I can fight back. I can at least hold or even win mm -hmm. the game. And what happened after the opening? Um, uh, we drew the game, but I got a comfortable position. And at some point, I was even present. But That's I true. let advantage slip and it was a draw. So you were, you were worse. Uh, you were down on, well, you were caught in the opening. You were probably worse and you were down on time. And you were still confident that you were not going to lose. Yeah. No, in fact, by the game, <laughs> I 14 minutes late. Oh, what happened? So it, in Dubai, they, they had a bus, but it was, it used to leave like 40 minutes uh, prior to the game. Mm. So we thought it was too early. So me, uh, Taba Tabai, and there were two other guys. We used to take a taxi and go to the game. And this time, we just didn't get a taxi for a very long time. So There's no, like, Uber? You can't, like, get a digital oh. taxi? Yeah, that's possible. But every day, we were just getting it on the road. So we were trying to find one. But they were not able to. I understand it. this sounds like a very funny sitcom. Like, four of the best chess, or three of the best, four of the best chess players in the world trying to find a taxi, <laughs> but failing and getting to, well, it, it's, it's kind of normal, right? Like to, to come to the game a little bit late, like two, three minutes late. Um, yeah, it's because I, I don't know if you experience this, but you know, if you ever come to the board before the game starts, like let's say game is at 11, you're there at 10.55, you have to sit in silence with the player in front of you. Don't you ever, isn't that strange? Like a little bit strange. I always found it like a little like, eh, I'd rather come like two minutes late and just the game has already started. I didn't feel really the funny thing, but I also have the habit of going late. Almost every tournament I go, like two, every game I go like two, three minutes late, but that's not on purpose. I'm just a very late. Person. I see. I woke up late. And... I see. No, it's, it's, it's normal, but are, of, of the top players after like after the game is over, uh, is it generally normal to have like a conversation um, about the game? Are there some players who are not so talkative, some players who are super talkative? Like I feel like with Levon, you couldn't have a conversation about the game anytime. But I don't know yeah. about some of the other players. Uh, actually, I haven't played OTB with most of the elite players. But huh? uh, oh, yeah. I think possible to have. I'm not so sure though. Yeah, you've only played Rapid and Blitz over the board with them, right? Yeah, Classical. Um, actually, who is the highest rated player I have played in Classical? Maybe that's Vichy, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 probably. Yeah. Probably. Wow. That's so crazy, right? Like, the pandemic has changed so much that you've played all these amazing players and obviously you yourself have become an amazing player, but it's all been mostly online. Are you, are you able to share if you're going to play in Tata Steel in January? Oh, yes, I'll be playing because I, I won the Challengers tournament last year. Ah, yeah, see, but perfect. You see, remember I asked you about the other tournament you won? Yeah, you won the Challengers. Okay, so you're going to be playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, will there be another invitation to an Indian player? Do you know? Can you share? Can you not share? Because it's, I don't know if it's private information. Yeah, I do know there will be a few Indians. Okay, great. That's exactly what we need. We need you guys to beat uh, all the, all the you know, 2750s, 2770s of the world. Uh, so the way I like to sign off some of these is what's next for you so you told me about world rapid blitz but that's in two months so yeah. what so, is coming up for you next i have the dead match with gukic that's what i have next okay on 5th november and after that i'll be playing in the major san francisco event and 
unfortunately i cannot travel but i'll be playing remotely oh, sorry okay. what major san francisco yeah. event champions chess tour major ah oh oh that's live Oh, it's supposed to be live, but I couldn't get my visa. I see. So I'll be playing online. Oh, I did not realize. So it was supposed to be like a Miami style? Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. When is that? It's, um, I think, so, something like 11 to 20 November. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I did not even... That you see, you are their marketing team because I did not even I did not even realize. Wow, eleven. Okay, wow. Okay, so you're gonna be playing in that event. All the same guys, right? Like, uh, okay, Magnus. But I, I mean, I imagine there's gonna be some others. I don't I don't even know who it's gonna be. Yeah, I guess Magnus, Duda, Prag, and a few others. And then I'll be playing in the Tata Steel India tournament. Uh huh. Uh, right. We have it in Kolkata every year. And. I believe that's it. Until we see about... So December, it's basically just the Rapid and Bliss? Yeah. So classical, my next tournament is going to be like... I have nothing until that point. Ah, amazing. So how does that feel? You have three months to go until a major tournament. Do you even... It's like in school, right? If a deadline is three months away, you don't really like pay attention to it? Or do you start your training now? Um... No, I feel like I should focus on the current tournament, so I'm mostly focusing on rapid list right now, and I do take t these tournaments quite seriously as well. At yeah, some no. point, I used to be like classical is the only important thing. I shouldn't focus so much on rapid list, but now, uh, although I enjoyed rapid list more, and now the good thing is, mm -hmm. I rapid list also has its own value now. So uh, I did. Yeah, I was gonna say some of these online events have unbelievable price funds. It's almost more money than in classical. So, right, that's yeah, that's of course, that's of course a um, very important detail. If there was not enough, uh, you know, sustainability from a career standpoint, then uh, you cannot focus on it. No, but it it makes a lot of sense. So, uh, un got you. Uh, anything beyond Vike in January or nothing yet? Nothing yet. After work, I have no clue, but I believe by that point, there should be something. Who do you think is going to win the world championship? Mm, good question. I would go with Deng. Because you, you like the stability? You like the... You, you just think he's a little bit more consistent? I, I just like him as a player. Uh, I also see some similar, similarities between him and me. Oh, between yourself and him? Oh, uh, yes. Have you played Ding in any of the online events? Yeah, I actually played him once in the 2021 Champions Chess Tournament. Right. Because, it's you know, like, I did commentary on Nihal Ding, and they had never played a chess game against each other. Oh, okay. Like, ever, online, ever, which is just so weird, because Ding is number two in the world in classical chess, right? So... Uh, but I guess uh, Vike is going to be your first time playing classical OTB against the best players in the world, right? Yes, for sure. Wow. That's exciting. What a weird time we live in. Because you're going to be... When are you... You're, you're born which month? Well, in September. Oh, September. Okay, so you, you, have, you have a late birthday. But you're going to be, I mean, 19 years old and you've never I'm played... Than that. In, in But in... Uh, I turned 19 two months ago, one month ago. Yeah, I'm saying you're going to be 19 in, in Vike already. Like you, you're already, yeah, yeah. But you've never played the best players in the classical. It's so weird. It's just because the last like two years, we just, yeah. you know, we're just in this weird, uh, weird phase. So uh, in terms of rating, do you, is it 2,800 the next goal, 2,750 the next goal? Is the next goal number one in India? Is that a weird feeling, by the way, that you're going to be soon maybe number one in India? No, I don't really think so much about the rankings in general. Okay. I just try to gain my rating and that is it. And now uh, I'm trying not to care so much about rating even because I don't know how many classical tournaments I'll be playing from now on. Sure. So I feel like it's better if I just focus on the tournaments rather than on rating and ranking. And it almost feels like it's been a bit beneficial because like you said, you were 2550, 2600 and I, I think we're in a spot in chess where rating doesn't actually reflect how good somebody is which is a 
rare case. So you could be overrated and underrated too. And a lot of you were underrated, which was to your benefit. But now if you get to 2730 and you start thinking about being 2730, you know, you, you don't know what your actual strength is. You might be playing like a 2790 or whatever, and uh, there's no point, right? You just go and you play chess, and I guess that's been your philosophy. Oh, no, actually, I used to think a lot about rating. Oh, okay. <laughs> At some point, I so I played this tournament, Svench League, mm -hmm. in June of this year, and I was thinking so much about crossing the 2700 mark. I was like 2687 or something. And that eventually affected my play um, because of the fact that I wanted to hit 2700 in that tournament very badly. I even started playing, performing below my level and stuff like that. So, yeah. I so you, you learned your lesson the hard way and yes. <laughs> got you. With all of the media attention on chess, I mean, in the US, it's quite crazy. I can imagine in India as well, it's, it's very intense. It, I'm sure it, it's amazing, but at the same time, it's kind of it can it can be a bit challenging. I'm sure you have to kind of stay off social media in good and bad times. It's just too much, I would imagine, right, for a chess player. Yeah, I believe so. Especially recently, I uninstalled Instagram. Okay. I thought it's a bit too distracting, and so yeah, I'm not really checking so following the coverage and stuff so much. Yeah, you just go, you train, you practice, you uh, you play. Um, last question for me was going to be when you were actually potentially considering quitting chess. Good job not quitting, by the way. <laughs> I feel like you look back on that pretty like a like a pretty good decision. What were some uh, career paths that you you were thinking about? Uh, I was too young, so I hadn't really thought about it, but. When I was young, at some point, I thought I should become a doctor. Okay. And at some point, I was like, maybe a scientist would be interesting. But I don't think I would have become any of this, even if I had not, even if I quit chess. What do you maybe think I, you would have become? Then? <laughs> I mean... I just get this feeling that I would have become some teacher or something. Okay. Just a normal teacher who enjoys his work. Got it. Well, good job not becoming a teacher or a scientist or a doctor. Uh, I also had to go through this not to, to become a chess player, but I in New York is a very good place to teach chess. You can actually make a totally normal career teaching chess. So that I had to go through this myself in terms of do I want a job at some corporate? I was never going to be a doctor because I'm scared of blood So and I cannot do needles. So that was never going to happen for me, but uh, I also okay. had... Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Arjun, I, I, I really appreciate uh, the time today. I got through everything I wanted to ask. So it's been, uh, it's been amazing watching, uh, watching the journey. It's been great covering your games. And well, I, I just look, look forward to doing it more and more. So all the best. Thank you. And it was nice being here. And thanks for having me. As always, everyone, thanks so much for your support of my main content as well as the podcast and my clips and so on. If you want to support me, there are donation links on my Twitch and my YouTube. But the best way to support me is to get one of my chess courses available at Chessly. That's chessly.com. All of my courses are hosted on there now. And I will see you right back here in Gotham City with our next guest very soon.